Hi, and welcome to my porch. And today, we get to speak to the lovely Melissa Pereira. We've been on this mm -hmm. porch before talking mm -hmm. many times. Mm -hmm. um, so these I have questions I want to ask you, and um, I'm so glad you don't know what they are. Um, but uh, my first question is, what is your first memory of APT? Oh man, I feel like it's a cop-out because I already shared it. But um, I came up here with uh, Laura Rook mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Santiago Sosa, who had worked here before. Right. And my first impression of APT was actually working with Susan Sweeney on like some random monologue. Um, How did that happen? Because Santiago was like, you have to meet Susan Sweeney. I think you'd really like her. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And so then you worked with her? Yeah. He was like, I, you should work, you should work with her. And I said, all right. So I just had a piece and I worked with her and I talked with her for a while and like, I shared some of my story and why I, I came up here with Santiago and she's like, that's awesome. Great. It's good to meet you. And then we went and saw Taming of the Shrew uh, that Jim Ridge and Tracy were in. Right, right, right. That was yeah. Tim O'Sal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. pretty good. Yeah. Who then I went on to work on uh, You From the Bridge and Book of Will. Yeah, you guys get along pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I see that. I see that in your work. <laughs> yeah. When did you know that you wanted to be here, but you wished you could be here or you were here and wished you could make this a, a place you wanted to return to? Well, I feel like it was after we did R and J that summer. It was mm -hmm. my that was my first summer here, but I remember. First of all, I learned that there was such a thing as a core company mm -hmm. and even a thing as like the regional theater through Henry Warnitz, right? Who I worked to before, who was my mentor in grad school. But um, yeah, so the the idea of the regional theater or working in the regional theater was not even on my radar until I met Henry. Mm -hmm. And then he said, there's this great company, it's in the middle of the woods, you have to go experience. So that's my first like hearing of APT. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Then I came up here and I experienced APT and it was a super rainy night and uh, the actors wished you know, the show could just be over. I know what that feels like now to be like, go Why are you still home. sitting there? Go home. We love you. Go home. But you can't stay here. No, but uh, no, I, uh, yeah. So that was the, my first sort of, you know, while I was here. But um, yeah, what was the question again? I think that when did you know you kind of wanted to? That I wanted to stay here. I mean, I talked to you pretty soon when yeah. I, w I was very forward. I wanted, to, I kn always knew that I was looking, you know, bloom where you're planted sort of situation. Mm -hmm. So I knew that I needed to find a place to be. And I'm a Capricorn, so like the transient life of like moving all the time doesn't really work for me. Uh -huh. And I don't think I could be an actor. I was just talking to Jeb about this. I don't think I could be an actor if I hadn't found some place to be for at least a certain amount of time because I've been searching for a home right for what I feel like is a better part of my life right. so um, I think knowing that I could have a place to actually invest my time in yeah. and a place that would invest in me in return um, was incredibly important and I think seeing that other people were already leading that life in their own ways was like yeah that's something that I already knew even before coming here that I was searching for right. and then experiencing it for myself playing such a um, iconic role uh, and hard role really as Juliet I was like oh I know that I'm a better actor after having experienced that so why wouldn't I want to do more of that right. and challenge myself in more ways than that without and I'm sure other actors have said this too, but without having to worry about um, the lousy way in which we have to find jobs, uh, you know, which is our, inhuman. Yeah. I mean, we have one minute that you go and you deliver this 16 lines and you might have had, I don't know, 15 years of training, however long you've been in school yeah. and working or whatever. And you have to pack all of that into 15, uh, into 15 lines of verse or 16 lines. It's just not... Uh, it's not right. It's, it's not conducive, actually. No. And one of the cool things about the way that APT auditions, which I'm not sure that a lot of people know about, is that you take a lot of time. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what do you really mean? Because, I mean, I, I, I do, I think that we audition you how many times for Juliet, did you say? Too many. <laughs> That's how many. Yeah. No, a long time because you met me when I was out at Utah Shakes yes. and I, um, 
yeah so then it, it was like a year and a half to two years of like talking about it. and i remember y'all being like there is well let's see yeah because then i had to put together that the same the apt the people that went to apt came to utah and now they saw my work right because i had come and experienced yes. the place first the place, yeah, yeah. Um, and seen my work and they, you were like two years from now we're doing romeo and juliet <laughs> And I was like, well, I don't know. What Why are you so to- old by then? <laughs> I've been way too old for Juliet by then. Oh my God. Yeah. Juliet was beautiful, no. Thank by you the God. way. Thank you. And when did I direct you? When the first, uh, when we, my first show here. Your first my show. actual first, but it wasn't like my summer season. No, it was like a that, fall season thing. Yeah. yeah. So we did Les Liaisons, um, which was, yeah, my first collaboration with you and the core company. And you were already, already doing Juliet, already cast at Juliet. No. Was that true? <laughs> No, we we were still. <laughs> <laughs> we were Sorry, still. It's just really brutal what we do. It's just a cut. cut. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take that out. Stop. No. Um, but I, it's such a matrix, and we're always like, and yeah. Yeah, but what I was saying is that the great way that APT auditions is not, it's not just as, and anyone who has auditioned yeah. for the company will know, that it's not just a five minute encounter with some people that you're meeting only once, that it is sort of an interview as well as um, of, of your own, not necessarily of your values, but who you are as a person and mm-hmm. you are interested in people and getting to know people. Mm-hmm. And I think that as an artist who, as, as all artists go in and out of rooms all the time on the daily, right. that actually meeting someone who's present and who's willing right. to engage, whether you get the role or not, obviously um, is what is at the forefront of our minds, but also walking out of there knowing that we had a valuable experience and a bit of a, of a mini workshop, mm-hmm. which was my actual experience when, when I met Susan Sweeney. Right. So it was a continuation of what um, I think the the school of thought of APT was that to invest in people and in in getting to know who we are as that because for better or worse we deal with each other a lot <laughs> so if we find out we don't like each other halfway through that's just real sad it's it's and when people said like my dad used to say that like the one bad apple and I'd be like yeah 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 okay but I experienced it like my first few years here where I was like oh my gosh this is affecting Everything. Mm-hmm. Everybody. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna let my cat in. Now. <laughs> well, I think that's a great. I've been reminded of that one bad apple saying a lot recently for a lot of reasons. Yeah. Um, and I love what the other half of that statement is, right? That it like rocks the whole thing. Rocks so, the whole yeah. thing, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. yeah. And so it's interesting because it's a, it's um, it's it's a whole person, like you said. It's not just an incredible actor. And I, I've always said that casting. Um, I, 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 I shouldn't, I, I find some casting processes actually a word that I don't, shouldn't say, but kind of lazy mm-hmm. because I, I think there's so many more great actors than there are work. Mm-hmm. So to find the person is part of the job, mm-hmm. especially here. It's, a, it's, it's necessary. Yeah. But I remember where you were when you asked me, I think I have this memory, like in my, like a blaze oh, yeah. in my mind, yeah. of when you asked about being in the company. Mm-hmm. Do you remember where we were? Yeah, we were at that place that's closed now. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And I had statistics. Yes, you I did. You were like, prepared. Yeah, like, this many Latinx people in Madison, this is how we need, yeah, like, why aren't we doing these kinds of stories? I remember yep. being like, I'm here. We can do that. We should do that. Yep. And it changed my life. <laughs> and it changed APT. <laughs> one day. In one day, one meeting. So, so you know John Langs. The director. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Good actor. I totally, I bought that first. I used I, to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so John Langs, when he first worked here, was years ago, years and years ago, and he was very young. He mm-hmm. still looks like he's young, but he was very young when he came here, and he's working with a lot of people older than him. And he was, the next year we asked him to work with us, he said, I had to think about that. It's like, I mean, I want to. It was an amazing experience, but it was like walking through fire, mm-hmm. working there. What do you think he meant by that? Um, I don't know exactly what he meant, but related to um, there's something that happens when a lot of people that have known each other for so long, there's a culture that's created when people have known each other for so long that, um, uh, yeah, that's created around that, right? So then anyone who is invited into that culture um, 
can either be has a unique experience about it mm -hmm. so i think that is an experience that can only be created through time and people uh -huh. having spent all that time right together so um yeah but i, I remember um actually having a conversation with uh, a member of the car company who was telling me like you know when you first go out there there's all these people and you can see them and i was like yeah i do plays <laughs> like yeah I've, I've, I've been a play for it but it i've actually had a real um like profound conversation with uh, other co co core company members too about what it is that we choose to pass down mm -hmm. and whether your fears are actually going to be my fears mm -hmm. and how a lot of them weren't uh -huh. and how I had there was a lot of people making sure that I was okay obviously because again new environment and all of that but like um, one of the things that attracted me to this place is also like the work ethic mm -hmm. um, and I'm still trying to figure out if I work hard because that's the way I like to work or if I work hard uh, because that's what's expected. Uh -huh. um, so especially now during a pandemic when I'm not doing anything to be like, oh, actually, no, it's really nice to have time mm -hmm. to think mm -hmm. and to um, to not uh, to have standards that I create. But uh honor for myself that aren't attached to like a deadline and yeah. so um yeah i i think that the the walking through fire scenario can be can be attached to just a culture that cre that is created through time and also different fears that sometimes get passed down mm -hmm. um and which some of those fears can be considered advice yeah uh, but some of them are just fears mm -hmm. and uh and some of them I don't want. Yeah, <laughs> it's something you don't have. Yeah, yeah, you literally. Yeah, don't. and never I, had. and and I should have the opportunity and the chance to figure out what they are for myself. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's what I have been on the journey of, of figuring out over the past seven years I've been here. Yeah, like what are my actual fears? And um, instead of taking someone else's narrative and making that something I need to fight for or against or react to. What have you been most proud of? Um, I mean, as a person or in, in the last seven years of being here? Oh my God, the, I think, I think the people I have met, I think like, I told you this before, but, uh, funnily enough, John Langs, when we were working on Midsummer, one of my all time favorite memories is walking up the hill with like, with Cher Alvarez oh, yeah. who worked here and, uh, with Eddie, mm -hmm. uh, and Xavier, uh, Cage walking up the hill. Um, and a lot of us are bilingual and speaking Spanish. And I stopped us all in the middle of the hill. And I just want to say, cause I've been here for a minute and I wanted to mark that moment that although it may not be unusual in the world, mm -hmm. it was unusual for me and, ex and, uh, important for me to be walking up that hill, um, telling jokes in Spanish with with people of color also that that um, had come here to experience Shakespeare in our own way um, that was uh, probably one of my most cherished moments of experiencing the woods and experiencing community and being seen and feeling uh, heard um, yeah that's that remains like top yeah aside from I mean it, I mean the work is great and I love doing the work and all of that but as far as like a human being yeah. and feeling like I'm on the right path towards something bigger than myself that that was that was big for me that was yeah. a big summer yeah that was a beautiful summer and yeah. and I have to say that it's no um, it's no uh, it's not lost on me that a lot of those people are here because of you hmm. I mean because you were here and they were interested in being here with you and um, work that you did to make this place livable for yourself and it's <laughs> it's an extra amount of work than most people that enter this space and it takes a lot to do what you're doing as a the only latinx person in our core company um, but since you've been here the the expansion of our ability to our willingness what we've ignored in the past what we've been failing at is we're just less able to fail with you here and that's yeah. that's true yeah um, what do you wish you could do over? What do I wish I could do over? That's, I really, because I want to say everything. I want to do everything over in a certain extent. Like, 
Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of things that I'm proud of, but there is nothing that... I mean, I told you just not that long ago, like, I wouldn't even want to do... I said, oh, we don't want to do the plays that we were going to do this summer <laughs> because... Different plays. Yeah, no, because... Not, not that, but we wouldn't want to do those plays uh, with the knowledge that we had yesterday. We want to do them with the knowledge that we have today. Exactly. So, so it, as we sit in that, like, uh, I, yeah, I would do everything. I would do everything over, and I hope I would be better at it. I don't know that I would, but I think it's more, more knowledge is always good. I mean, yeah. that's like, <laughs> that's where um, inclusive opinions are formed is based on actual knowledge experience um so i i i would do i would do everything over and um if i were given the opportunity if you yeah. do you think that that would um that does that serve is that to say that as you move forward that would probably be the same reaction in 10 years and in 10 years from then that oh, the things God. that you're doing behind you will always be something you would want to do again as you have learned and grown yeah, maybe, or that I would, or I would just choose not to do them. <laughs> uh, right, right. You know what I mean? I would just would, I would just do something completely different, I guess. Uh -huh. uh, but I don't know. I wish I, I wish I, I'd have more insight into that question. No, no. no. I think it's yeah. for some people. They're like, oh my god, I really need to revisit that one role. I just now what I know, I just did not. And I wish yeah. I could do that role now. And some people are like, I wish I could do over that I. That I chose to go away for the summer. Or I chose to. Or that I could do over, do Romeo all over again. Yeah, I feel like I mean you know me like I am so intense. <laughs> no, who? What? To I like do such a, like, I think I mean, not 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 in a in a way that I'm actually that proud of. Like I think I think it comes is it's a it's a it has a dual nature, right? Sure. So, I I think that I have no idea what you're talking. About, <laughs> by the way. Yeah, I just feel like I hope that if I got to do over things again that I would um, let go of the reins a little bit more in anything that I did um, because it came at such a sometimes like detriment to my own mental health mm -hmm. you know and, mm -hmm. and 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 because we work so hard and uh, I think I just the the joy that I that and, and the the way that this art form makes me feel like I'm part of a community and like I'm an activist in a really important and strong way. I think sometimes that um, my workaholic nature mm -hmm. um, got in the way of allowing me to see what was actually happening mm -hmm. in real time mm -hmm. so that I can only now only look back and say, oh, that's what was happening mm -hmm. in real time. So I think if I if I could do things over, I don't know that I have an actual role, but I would let go of the reins a little bit more. Um, but that doesn't mean I would research any less or that I would, you know, I don't <laughs> think I can let go of that. Yeah, it would be marked with, I'm sure some of those notes are stupid, but I have to write them down, you know, like I just can't help myself. Sometimes there's no room, um, on, the, there's no room <laughs> on the page. It's really, it's a wonderful, yeah. I actually have a, I really want to do a thing where we talk about um, actors' processes and I want them all to just take a picture of one of their pages of their scripts. And let us see just a little insight into their mind. It's it's amazing how different you all go after your work. Yeah, and some of us like have more than one script too because they start to get real, like messed up by the end. Yeah, the pages start to fall off, and then you're like, some of you oh. them. Yeah, yes, that's true. Okay, so we're all about words. Yeah, I did that whole thing about how precise you are, and that you love words. So you yeah, love yeah. words more than most people I know. You are more intentional about your words and have such integrity with your words that you've taught me how to be better at that which I think is always for someone who's talked as much as I do important although it's fun isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're all about words at APT so what's your favorite word favorite word arrest the cops who killed Brianna Taylor that's a lot more words than one but yeah that's all you can say I think words. sometimes I think sometimes you need more than one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's your least favorite word? Ice. That makes sense to me. What do you... I mean, ice is a whole thing. Mm -hmm. 
ice is a, an institution or a, so of all the things that are out there doing damage. Yeah, on 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 my community, on 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 people searching refuge, um, searching for a home that we get to have here. Um, yeah, I would say that that is the one of my least favorite things that other people searching for homes uh, are being stopped in such a brutal and dehumanizing way. Um, by by this particular group of organized um, power, yeah, I would say that is my least favorite word and my least favorite. Um, my my, it's not even favorite, but my uh, one of the the most oppressive systems um, for people who have the least amount of rights moving to a new country, and I can speak into that with. Um, some personal experience being an immigrant so yeah I think of measure for measure mm. and it makes me immediately think about those choices and how different they would be now mm -hmm. and how different they would be the next day mm -hmm. and the complication of that and I would love to talk about this a little bit mm -hmm. the complication yeah. of that um, of that reality for me mm -hmm. is also that I sat in that audience when Kavanaugh hearings were happening and I mm -hmm. witnessed and felt the power of that piece and we placed it in a contemporary setting and we um, learned a lot mm -hmm. and made a lot of mistakes inside of that mm -hmm. for the actors involved in that mm -hmm. piece. You want to speak a little bit to that? Oh man, yeah. I mean, it, it's like, um, it's going from words, right? They, mm -hmm. They're important. It's going from what you see versus what I see, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and how when I actually what I saw in the context of my reality and my colleagues reality was um, these people on the stage being separated by ICE officers mm -hmm. um, whereas there were other people who were just seeing like people of the law and like you right. know it does it as I mean as if that's any better right. I'm not saying that that's any better but the, the specificity um, goes from being like a, a theory or yeah. an idea yeah. to actually affecting real people in the real world. And on the stage, on, thinking to them about the actors. About the actors, but yes, not just, not, so it goes from an idea that someone might have that you're putting on the thing and then you have to consider what the person's experience that is experiencing the play mm -hmm. actually is in order for us to be able to tell that story i think in a three-dimensional way that feels safe fulfilling mm -hmm. um important yes. yeah and purposeful i love that word i love purposeful because i think that i mean it's on our values mm -hmm. that apt we do things on purpose mm -hmm. so i also like to think that what doesn't happen happens on purpose too right yeah. so how do we hold ourselves accountable yeah. to the duality of that value yeah um, but yeah I think to the the when an idea an, that an idea can be expressed um, it can't independently be expressed of the individuals that participate in in making that right true I agree with you and have to sense? live it actually yeah. live it yeah. and be witnessed by others living it and yeah. I yeah I think that it's a do-over moment for me personally that um, that not being able to not have been able to foresee the necessity of acknowledging that and being in the room us being in the room with that knowledge as we're crafting it mm -hmm. um, so I would say yeah. a do-over on that there were a lot of things that um, were happening real time for us in the room yeah. as well. What we can't anticipate is how something's gonna be received, right? right? And I think that that's where um, a lot of actors of color are, we don't, we don't have control of that as actors. Uh, that's why we need more than just the actors helping us tell that story that are also from BIPOC communities so that we have other lenses influencing by the time the idea gets to us, it's a safe idea for right. us to explore. Right. Um, so yeah, yeah, a do over on that would be fine. But I mean, I wouldn't want to do. I wouldn't want to. I don't want to play her again. Um, what's one piece of advice you wish you could give your younger self, like Melissa? 
Don't wait until they agree. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think anybody has to, um, and I think I've learned this through our conversations. I think I've learned this through being at APT. Like, I don't think I have to wait for somebody to agree with me or to back me up to share what it is that I believe in. Mm -hmm. And that's really important to me. And yeah, so yeah, don't, I don't have to wait. And I think I've waited for a long time. I mean, I, yeah, not just here, but even growing up, you know, not, yeah. Waiting to be agreed with or waiting to be understood is uh, also um, inactive, and mm -hmm. I like to act. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you do. <laughs> and when you do, things change. And that's some. Um, I wish there was more of that mm -hmm. in the world. I wish there was more of that. I wish there was more people willing to act without knowing. I mean, being brave, I think um, I was talking with Sarah Bellamy and she said, um, it's about, um, she was saying, when you talk to people about being in a safe space, mm -hmm. you also want to talk about being in a brave space. Yeah, yeah. And I think a brave yeah. space speaks a lot to the, to the time we're in right now. Mm -hmm. And, and you are brave. That Thanks. is for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. I love you. Thank you so much. Too, yeah. This is good. Okay. That's it. We're done great. now. That's a yeah, That's it. That's it. Okay. All right. Now that's I good. can. I mean, look, I didn't even drink Cheers. this. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>